Welcome back to my video series where I show you all of the steps to build a quadcopter from start to finish. Every single thing you need to know all in one playlist linked in the video description if you just dropped in in the middle. In this video, we are going to start playing with the ESCs. We're going to update the firmware on the ESC and we're going to get bi-directional D-Shot going. Ooh, what's that? You want it. Trust me. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. I was so tempted to leave this part out of the playlist and just tell you, just use the firmware that's on the ESCs. It's fine and you don't need bi-directional D-Shot. But the purpose of this series is not just to give you the minimum amount that you need to get a quad in the air. I want you to kind of learn all this stuff that you might want to know and kind of treat this almost like a, like a master class, a beginner level master class. That's a thing, isn't it? So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do in this uh, in this step is to download a program called BL Heli Configurator. Now, back up a second. BL Heli is the software that runs on the ESC. Back up one more second. The ESC is the thing that makes the motor spin. And it's actually just a little computer with software running on it. it sounds kind of crazy to have a computer whose only job is to make your motor spin, but it's true. And the software that we've got running on this ESC, on this quad, is called BL Heli S. BL Heli S is, it's kind of like Windows 7. It's kind of one generation back. The newer one is BL Heli 32, and it's got a whole bunch of cool additional features. But a lot of budget quads ship with BL Heli S ESCs because they're cheaper. But we can get all the features that we need out of BL Heli S, and we're going to do it using this software, BL Heli Configurator. Now, there's a link down in the video description where you can download this, and I actually don't have the latest version on my computer, so I'm going to go ahead and download it too. And for me, this is uh, Windows, so I'm going to download the Win32 version. I guess I could download the 64-bit version. I don't see what advantage there would be of that. So <laughs> let's get the 32-bit version. And that's going to download as a zip file. There is no installer for Windows. It's just a, a zip file. And when I open that zip file in here is a folder, BL Heli Configurator. And I actually have on my hard drive already an RC Utilities folder that has a BL Heli Configurator folder in it. So I'm just going to, I guess I'm just going to delete that. And then I'm just going to take this BL Heli Configurator out of the zip file and put it into my RC Utilities folder. And there it is. And then I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to launch BL Heli Configurator. Now, the next thing I need to do is plug in a battery and power up my ESC. I am doing that using a smoke stopper, which I discussed earlier in the series uh, for, just for safety. And I have my props off. Every time you plug in a battery when you're working on your quad on the bench, the props need to be off because if anything goes wrong and the motors spin up, you could be seriously injured. How many fingers do you really need? All of them. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in and up here in the upper right, just like when we were working with Betaflight, we had a COM port up here. It's the same one. It's COM3. I'm going to select that. It should be auto selected. and I'm going to hit connect. One thing to keep in mind is if you have Betaflight configurator running in the background, it will grab the COM port and not let anything else have it. So you're going to need to like close Betaflight configurator if you're running it in the background or if you've got some other program running that might grab a COM port. Like if I'm working with my 3D printer and I've got the Cura slicer program open, it grabs the COM port. So basically, if you can't connect, then maybe there's something running in the background that you need to close. Just a thought. The next thing to do is to hit read setup here in the lower right. And after you do that, you should see a screen that looks like this. Now we want to update the firmware on this ESC because there is a feature of Betaflight called bidirectional D-shot and RPM filtering. And the bottom line is it makes your quad fly much better. You want it. Just trust me on this one. You want it. I wouldn't be wasting your time at it with it if this wasn't a big freaking deal. So what we're going to need to do is make a note of this right here, M. L30. That is the layout of our ESC, and we need to remember that. Oh, okay. Well, no bi-directional D-shot for us um, because this ESC can't run it. There's two processors that the ESC could have, a fast one and a slow one, and this ESC has the slow one. So forget bi-directional D-shot. <laughs> Sucks to be us. Well, okay then. 
at the very least, we should make sure we have the latest firmware. And we're gonna do that by hit, clicking the flash all button. And it looks like 16.7 is official. 16.7.1 is in beta. I'm not gonna do any beta stuff. So it looks like 16.7 is official. And if we cancel out of here, you can see 16.7 is what we've got. So we've already got the latest firmware. We don't need to screw with that. The next thing we need to do is make sure that our motors are spinning the correct direction. And this is also something we're gonna do with BL Heli. So we're gonna stick this in this video as well. I'm gonna disconnect from BL Heli Configurator and I'm gonna go back to Betaflight and I'm gonna connect. And what I'm gonna do is go to the Motors tab and I'm gonna tick this box I understand the risks, the propellers are removed. Your propellers must be removed at this point. This will allow the motors to spin. In fact, we are gonna intentionally spin the motors and if your props are on, it will, be, it will be a bad day for you. So I understand the risks, props are removed. And the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna raise these sliders one by one and that's gonna make the motors begin to spin. And we're gonna verify two things. Number one, we're gonna verify that when I raise slider number one, we're gonna look at this diagram and we're gonna see that motor position number one begins to spin. So I gotta turn the quad so it's facing forward. Okay, forward again is this wider segment here with the little sticky outy nubs here. Mm, yeah, so that's forward, ESC is on the back. Okay, the other thing we're gonna verify is that the motor spins the direction indicated here on the diagram. So we're checking motor position and motor direction. And I encourage you, no matter how many quadcopters you build, no matter how much you know what direction the motors should go and what position they should be in, always double check against this diagram because there are configuration options in Betaflight that could change the direction and position that Betaflight expects. And if you're working off your memory of how you think it should be, you could end up with a flight controller that's misconfigured. You set the motors up how you think they ought to be, but that's not how the flight controller expects them to be. And then you could have a problem. So always just cross check against this diagram, even if you know how the motors ought to be. So here we go. We're gonna start with motor number one. That should be the back right motor and it should be spinning clockwise. Let's see what if that happens. No. So. When I raise slider number one, we actually end up with motor number three. Ah, so I've done this on purpose. Yeah, that's true. I've done this on purpose to show you guys a, a, a step. Sometimes the motors are not mapped correctly. And the reason they're not correctly is because you actually have to flip the ESC over. The, the default motor direction that Betaflight expects, the ESC is actually needs to be flipped over from the way we did it. And I actually didn't know that, um, but it's okay. Sometimes you put an ESC on and you wanna rotate the ESC 90 degrees. Sometimes you flip it over. I'm gonna show you the steps to remap the motors to get them in the correct position. So here I've brought up Microsoft Excel and I'm gonna make three columns, slider, position, and pin. And you'll see in a second what those mean. For the slider, I'm gonna put one, two, three, four. And that's going to be the slider, the, the, the slider right here that we raise. For position, it's going to be the motor position that spins when we raise that slider. So slider number one spins position number three. Okay. Slider number two spins. You can see the front left is spinning. That is position number four. Slider number three spins position number one and slider number four. Presumably it's gonna spin position number two, but let's just verify that. Yeah, slider number one, slider number two, slider number four spins position number two. Now we could fix this by shuffling around wires, but that's kind of a pain in the butt. I wanna show you how to do it in software. And we're gonna to go to the CLI tab. What you're gonna type is resource. And we're gonna go through and we're gonna look at the, for the resource motor one, two, three, and four. And we're gonna put the pin number here, that's CO6, CO7, CO8, et cetera. We're gonna put that down for the uh, slider number. So motor one, CO6. So for slider one, we're gonna put CO6. Motor number two is pin CO7. Motor number three is pin CO8. Oh, that's very easy. And motor number four is pin CO9. So it goes just goes CO6789. They're not all gonna be like that, but you're just gonna find motor one, two, three, four, and you're gonna write down the pin number that they show. 
and then we're going to remap the motors. And we're going to do that by, you're just going to forget about the slider number, get rid of that. I mean, you don't have to actually literally delete it, but we're going to type resource motor. And we're going to just start with this first line, motor number three. And we're going to type the pin number C06, resource motor three C06. Okay. And then we're going to do that for each of the four lines. So this line, this line here is going to be resource motor four C07, resource motor one C08, resource motor two C09. So we've just typed motor and this number and this pin. And that's going to remap the motors so that they are in the correct position. Then we'll type save. And now when we go back to the motors tab, the motors should spin the correct position. But never make any assumptions. Always double check and verify that after you're done. I understand the risks. So motor number one, back right. Correct. Motor number two, front right. Correct. Motor number three, back left. Correct. Motor number four, front left. Correct. Great. Our motors are in the correct position. Now we have to verify the motor direction. And we're going to do that by using the master slider. I'm just going to raise the master slider and that will cause all of the motors to begin spinning. And then what I like to do is just get like a piece of paper or something. You can feel it with your finger, but it's not always clear with your finger which way the motor's pushing. I don't know. And I'm just going to check it using a piece of paper and see which way the paper pushes this push by the motor. Okay. So that motor is spinning clockwise. Check the diagram. Motor number one spins clockwise. Motor number one is correct. Motor number two counterclockwise. Correct. Oh, lucky us. Motor number three. I hope at least one is incorrect so we can show how to fix it. Motor number three counterclockwise. That's correct. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Motor number four clockwise. All of my motors are spinning the correct direction. Well, guys, I mean, some percentage of the time it's going to happen that all of your motors are spinning the correct direction. But if you do end up with a motor spinning the wrong direction, make a note of which motor numbers need to change direction. And then we're going to come back to BL Heli configurator. We're going to connect. We're going to read setup. And then here in BL Heli configurator, we can change the motor direction. So we could change it from normal to reversed. Don't worry about the ignore the bidirectional and bidirectional reversed. You're not going to use those. Um, if the motor needs to change direction, change it from normal to reversed or vice versa. Now I lucked out and all my motors are going the right direction. So I don't need to change any of these, but we would just change the ones we wanted to change. And then we would hit right setup. And that is going to bring us to the end of this video. This is a step that you have to do on every single build. You have to check that the motors are mapped correctly. They're in the correct position and that they're spinning the right direction. If that is not correct, when you try to fly, the quad will not fly at all. It just has to be right. And even if you do a lot of builds and you're pretty sure that you've got the motors correct, you always, I always double check and I always double check the direction. Um, I double check the direction because I just don't even think about the direction when I solder up the motors. I just solder them whichever way makes the wires neatest. And then I change them afterwards in BL Heli. In this case, I, you know, one out of every so many builds, you're going to luck out and get all the, number, all the motors spinning in the right direction. So maybe you lucked out too. Maybe you didn't. But either way, now you know how to fix it. That's going to be the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying. See you in the next one.